Hi, I'm Kit Owlitz. Welcome to Discipline Selling. Follow-up, reinforcement, and an assignment for you today. I remind you that most of us need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. It's just the fact of life. And with that said, this is a chance for you to be reminded of some of the important skills and concepts and principles that you were introduced to at the Discipline Selling Program that I hope that you're committed to at least consider keeping alive. The other thing to consider is that we tend to practice far less than we know. Thus, a chance for you to practice over multiple weeks here, the principles and skills that we talked about with your learning colleague and then with your customers. It's going to take practice. There's just no way around it. Today's lesson is called the pre, in, and post calls plus territory and account plans. It encompasses several components, but they're all melted together. And I'm going to refer to our handy dandy discipline selling participant guide because it's got some great concepts in there. Hopefully you've kept yours and we'll consider referring back to it. Now, even taking the time to refer back to this kind of material, your supplement material, the manual, the laminated cards, the flashcards, it takes pure Quadrant two discipline. Now you remember from an earlier year, uh, quadrant two are those activities that are important but not urgent. And all of sales falls under quadrant two. Most of us are tempted to live our lives in quadrant one or in a reactive mode. We're asking you in this program to consider, consider the value of moving some, some percentage of your activities over into this quadrant two arena. Because by doing so, you increase the probability of increasing your win rates and proactively working on things, skills, tools, ab adaptations, or adherence to principles. And there's just no way that not doing that is going to not result in you being more effective. So there's my little plea for today. We specifically want to talk about an aspect of the sales process that is pure quadrant two that is difficult for many salespeople, including myself, to stay committed to. And the first part of it is the, the sales call. And there's three parts to the sales call I'm suggesting. There's a pre-call, there's an in-call, and there's a post-call. Now, I always get asked, can you actually have the time to spend the necessary, the appropriate amount of time in all three of those areas for every single sales call that you want to go on? And my, my uh, coy, sarcastic salted with a little sarcasm back to is we'll only spend the required time in the pre-call, the in-call, and the post-call on those deals that you want to win. Now, of course, in reality, d does taking the time to requ uh, to spend in all three of those, can you always spend that? May maybe not, maybe not, but there's certainly some discipline, some increased rigor that could be done by most of us salespeople to spend more time preparing for a call because there's probably two parts to really winning uh, the deal, right? Whatever the deal is, there's preparing for the meeting and then there's winning at the meeting. You could also say there's a part that takes to actually get the meeting, right? So there's some skills there and then there's also a part to win at the meeting. With all that said, why wouldn't you consider spending a little bit of time preparing before just loose cannon in and uh, hope for the best. Now, one saving grace that we have is that by, will, by being willing to adhere to the order process, you remember what that was? Clearly, correctly. Uh, opportunity, un uncovering what's actually going on, the resources, can they pay for this? Decision making, uh, do you understand how they're gonna make the decision? Before you then pre present the exact solution and then the results, the last part of the order process is will they buy more from you? That framework, following that sequential process, can be a saving grace in a sales call because you always know where you are. However, there's so much more you can do to prepare in addition to being really good at the order process before the call so that you can win in the call. So in our handy-dandy discipline selling manual here, over on, a, on a, one of the pages, there's a kind of a hybrid of really additional insights that you can get good at so that you can win at the meeting. And it's broken down into six categories here. There's logistical stuff that you need to get. There's attendees, 
information that would be very valuable for you to understand so you can best prepare how to win at the meeting. There's understand the opportunity. That has to do with when you're in the meeting, there's a push zone normally where if you really had high courage and really worked on ensuring that you don't leave that meeting with without a clear expectation of what they're going to do and what you're going to do, you've left stuff on the table. There's a hook, right? No matter if you're just meeting them for the first time or working on very logistical, specific, nitty-gritty details to actually close the deal, there's always a hook that you should work on, and then there's some kind of close that includes follow-up. All of those pieces have to do with the pre-call, the in-call, and the post-call. And I'm challenging you this week to work on that. Now, just before I go for the actual challenge and close on this video, I want to do a short plug about the account plan and the territory plan. One of the questions I ask in the Discipline Selling Program is, is being a salesperson that much different than being the CEO of a company? Now, while we could argue all day about the nitty-gritty detailed differences between them, I'm going to submit to you today that a salesperson has a patch of dirt, and that patch of dirt you are literally responsible for. You are the CEO of that territory. So for the most part, they're, they're synonymous. You are the CEO of this area. So if that's the case, if you were asked to actually run an entire company, could you ever fathom not being clear about the market that you're competing in, about your patch or about your territory? Would you not be uh, absolutely insane not to be really clear about the kinds of accounts that you're in, working on, and want to pursue? Yeah, it would be ludicrous. So part of the quadrant two activity of being a world-class salesperson is to be clear about your account plans, your territory, and be committed to the sales call process, the pre-call, the in-call, and the post-call. So my challenge to you this week with your colleague, your, your uh, learning partner, and then with a customer, with your territory, is I'd like you to chew on this one. Would you be willing to take the challenge to conduct 50% of your sales calls this week or next week with a 100% effort on the preparation of the pre-call, nailing it in the call, and then doing the post-call activities. Are you up for it? I'm proposing to you that by doing so, you will increase your win rates. I'm Kid Alowitz. I'm with Discipline Selling, and we'll see you next time.